have children in the local school assembly and they deserve to be there. And just as Senator Sanders said about new solutions, we have to find new people if we want new solutions. And so that's what we are deeply, deeply committed to. Um, and my quick little bit of my story, I worked at an organization with a woman who's uh, 40 years my senior. Um, her name's Marie Wilson. You might know some of her work. She created Take Your Daughter to Work Day. Um, and is a, I, I really consider her my political mother. And who she considers her political mother is Shirley Chisholm. Mm -hmm. And so it's, a really, it's really beautiful to be here. It's, um, we took the Shirley Chisholm film around. <laughs> who has seen the Chisholm documentary? You have to see it. It's called Chisholm 72, Unbought and Unbossed. And it is an amazing documentary. Um, and we took that around the country and I think it was 2004. And you would be amazed at how many women did not know her and did not know her story. And it was when Carol Mosley Braun was also sort of making an attempt at the presidency in, in 04, and the parallels and the war and so many things that were happening, it was actually, if we don't know our history, we are doomed to repeat it. And it was literally what we were watching on the television screen. So um, I'm going to be quick. I'm also from New Jersey, so I talk really fast, so tell me to slow down, okay? <laughs> okay. But we're going to talk, uh, I'm going to do about 30 minutes on social media, and then my colleague Juanita is going to do a little bit on sort of organizing and campaigns and power and community. And we wanted to do social media first because who here hates social media? <laughs> Great. Who here has a Facebook account? Great. Okay, who here is on Twitter? Few, few, okay, great. What about anybody on Instagram? All the celebrities on Instagram. Okay. We're gonna keep, here's the thing about social media. It's the new tool in the toolbox. It doesn't replace any of the old tools. It does not replace door knocking. It does not replace community organizing. It does not replace good old fashioned talking to people and making those personal connections. It's simply a new tool in the toolbox. So I'm going to give you, hopefully, maybe two, three new tools today, and I want to take a couple questions as we go. So if I'm saying something or I'm using an acronym or anything, you just stop me and say, what the heck is that? All right? So, come on. Great, that's us. These are your two workshops. Great. Something I want, don't worry about this presentation. Because you all signed up through our site, you are now members of Vote Run Lead Nation. So the answer to this question is you are now a part of a community of over 25,000 women across the country, about uh, 15,000 of them who have been trained by Vote Run Lead, and over 2,500 who have ran for office. Right? So this is an exciting network to be a part of, and you can be able to communicate with these women on your membership with VRL. You'll get an email from us, it's pretty simple, and actually if you have any problems, we'll give you a ring. But the nice thing is, that PowerPoint can be found there. So don't worry about sort of seeing what's on the board. We send all this information to you afterwards. And then we also hold classes online every Thursday at 2 p.m. And they're live classes with experts from around the country, um, but they're also recorded as well, so if you can't see them at 2 p.m. or you're at work in a meeting, we have them on the website, and as coming to an event like this, you have access to them now, and all of this is free. So please send it on to folks in your networks as well. And this is Juanita in our training in Minneapolis. Okay, so tell me the reasons why you don't use social media. Shout one out. Time consuming. Time, too much time, absolutely. Privacy, okay. Anybody else? So these are the, most, the three most sort of concerns that we hear, right? I actually don't know what to say. We get that a lot. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say in 140 characters. There's a couple tricks for what to say. I heard somebody in the crowd while Congresswoman Meng was talking go, wow, right? Anytime you are wowing a speaker, or you find yourself nodding your head up and down, or you're given a mm-hmm, right? Those are the tweet-worthy or the Facebook-worthy things. The things that have emotional resonance with you, personally, are what you want to share. You do not have to be an expert. You do not have to know all the facts. It's the things that allow, that give you that sort of emotional head nod. That's a check for you or for your organization or for your campaign to share it. So that's like the number one rule of what do I share. Share what makes you feel good. And that hopefully that's also your grandchildren, things that are happening in your family. 
Nobody likes to see like one robotic person. My girlfriend called me and said, if you put one more thing about vote Riley on your Facebook, I'm seriously gonna defriend you. <laughs> I was like, okay, you're right. You know, she's like, what, what do you do? What else is happening in your life? Okay, number two, the time consuming. We're gonna get to some tips about this. Who here knows how to send a text message? Okay, then you can do social media. That's the second rule, all right? We, for organizations particularly, we encourage you to set time in your staff meetings where you are spending 15 minutes on what are your social media messages for the week. They're often things that you see in your email newsletter that you're sending out or the flyer that you're putting together. The material that you are already communicating is the same material that you would be communicating on social media. And then the privacy piece, right? I don't want to mix my personal with my political. It is A-OK -okay to have two Facebook pages. In fact, it, they have made it easier for you now. You can tag yourself as an organization. You can also call yourself a political candidate. And that can be the vehicle by which you have your separate, your candidacy or your organization or your group or your club. Feel free to set up a second Facebook page if you feel like that is becoming overwhelming, right? That is, it's pretty, there's a couple of settings in there which we won't get into, but you can, it allow you to send it both to your personal page and to your political page. So set that up. If it's something where you're concerned um, that folks are going to be putting messages on there, especially if you're a candidate, create that second page, all right? Go, I highly encourage you to go into your privacy settings. And some of us, when I go in there, I have no idea what's in there. So I barter. I tell people I will cook them a meal if they will come over and help me with my privacy settings. Right? Do, don't worry about knowing all of these things on social media. It's how, who in your network, who is your, uh, you know, your son's friend that's pretty good at social media that you know is going to be in town. Great. Invite them over, cook them some eggs and bacon, and have them sit at your desk and fi fix your privacy settings for you. Because as long as you do it once, it's there forever. So it's so a-okay to have two pages. When it comes to Twitter, in that little biography, if you if you have a who here maybe might be a little more political than their organization would want them to be, right? Maybe you want to say... <laughs> so along your Twitter biography, it gives you a few lines to write something about yourself. We encourage you to say something like, tweets are my own. And that gives, that's all, all it is is a sort of disclosure that says, you're not really speaking on behalf of your organization, even though you're the director for the local housing initiative, you're really on Twitter, you're speaking as a, as a person, as an individual, all right? So this is another, as I said, this is another place to say it. Um, a, a second tip I want to give you is something called Google Alerts. Who here uses a Gmail account? This is for all of you with a Gmail account. Google Alerts. That's, you want to put into a Google Alert just a few words. So if you care about Queen's Democratic policy, anything that has those three words in it will be sent to your inbox. Google Alerts, we have them set up at Vote Run Lead for things like women's leadership, women's leadership awards. A lot more of these women's leadership awards are coming. We're always looking for new talented women. Google is putting them in my inbox for me because I have set up a Google Alert. So anything, if you, you know, follow Senator Sanders, you put Senator Sanders into a Google Alert, every time he's in the news, you would get it. And then you would be able to share that, copy and paste that, and put that into your Facebook, or copy and paste that and put that into your social. So that's just an easy tip for feeling like there's kind of an overwhelming amount of information on the topic you care about. Right? All right. So there's a million social media platforms, a million, and more of them come out each day. I don't know what Snapchat is. I have no idea why I would send someone a picture that would then be deleted in the universe. Like, what? Right? So, and I'm a young person, I'm supposed to know all of these things, just automatically. So here's my rule, pick one or two sites. One or two, that's it. Make that the vehicle for folks to get in touch with you. Make that the brand of your organization. Our brand at Vote Run Lead is Facebook. We found that our community is a Facebook community, not a Twitter community. So we do what we need to do on Twitter, but we primarily message and communicate with our folks via Facebook. Okay? So Facebook and Twitter are the number one things. If you are an artist, if you have a business, if you're doing something where you're taking photographs, I highly encourage you to think about an Instagram 
because that is a very easy way for you to get a visual image of your business or your organization out there. Especially if you're doing things like rallies or um, you know, you're hosting a large event. You want to, that, that's something for businesses and, and some organizations I would consider Instagram. So here are two of my favorite tools. For Twitter, there is something called Buffer. And Buffer allows you to write 100 million tweets to your heart's desire and schedule them. So it looks like you are doing a ton of work. It looks like you are on top of your Twitter game, right? <laughs> All it is is that you've set them to go out every day at 8.30 for the next five days because you know you have an event coming up on Friday night and you want people in your community to get there. You send the same tweet every day at 8.30 and you just set it up. And it actually sends you a little message that says, congratulations, your buffer has been sent. It's like, great, I didn't do anything. Great. The second thing in Facebook, and this is what I want you to, if this is one thing you take from this workshop, it's called scheduled posts. So you can have your Facebook messages set up for the entire month. So this is critical for not-for-profits that often don't have a social media person or they don't have a, you know, a dedicated time or staff to social media. Facebook scheduled posts are your new best friend. That is simply going into the back end of, it's not even the back end, it's, it's, a, it's very easy and if we were connected to the internet I would show you. I'm happy to show anyone throughout the day as well. This is something you want to, to your communications person at your not-for-profit or just playing around on your own Facebook page, you want to go into scheduled posts. You fill it in just like a regular Facebook, you write it in that little box, and then it asks you what time you want to send. It's a small clock looking thing. And you just set it up to be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Again, especially if you have a vote happening um, where you want people to be calling the senator, or you're doing some lobbying, you want to schedule these posts. Because here's the thing about Facebook and Twitter. The, the tweets have a shelf life, for only about 30 minutes to an hour. So feel free to send the same tweet over and 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 over again. Okay? Because who's on Twitter at that exact moment? Maybe it's only a certain percentage of your followers, right? The thing about Facebook is they're making it harder to actually access your followers, particularly for organizations. You're only getting about 20 to 25% of the actual people who follow you. So if a thousand people follow you, you put something up, only about 250 people are seeing it. And a lot of folks don't, we didn't know that either until we did some digging. It used to be a little higher, about a third. The part of the reason is they want you to buy ads, right? They want you to spend a little bit of money on ads, part of their business model. But part of the reason is, is that the folks who might have liked your page once, but haven't liked your page for three years, the algorithm they use is they're not gonna show it to the person who liked your page once. So continuing to tag other people, especially people who like your stuff, is critical to actually who gets to see what you put up. So if you're tagging folks and you're putting, you know, at Juanita Lewis, and she liked you three years ago, the next post you put up, Juanita Lewis is gonna see it in her com computer screen, right? So the more you engage, the more you tag, and we're gonna talk a little bit about tagging and what that means, but the more you engage, the more you tag, the higher your viewership essentially goes up. All right. And then for those of you who are sort of social media geeks and want a bunch of ways to do this, I prefer Hootsuite. It allows you to put one thing in um, and then it sends it to your Twitter, it sends it to your Facebook, it might send it to your Instagram if you have that set up. And so that's something that if you're an organization and you're using multiple platforms, Hootsuite is a nice easy tool that says, here's something I want to type once and it goes to multiple places. Any questions on this? Another question I get is, I can't say what I want to say in 140 characters. I can't either. So, great. Okay. So in less than 140 characters, I am going to say, we're taking a short break. We're going to pause here, and we're going to have uh, Assemblywoman Ravnisi Bichat. Is that how you say it? Excuse me for butchering that. Welcome. We are so excited to have you. If you use social media, I hope you will tell us. Look, she's got her iPad out. Awesome. And we'll pause here, Blackberry. And, and Blackberry, multiple devices, and I will turn it, the program over to you. Thank you.